Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Susan Lynn. I'm a psychic and a medium. Thanks so much for tuning into this video. I have Adam Free here on the screen with me, and he has been on my channel before. Here with us, he's going to talk about AI and robotics and what planets or planetary influences might be bringing that or changing that. He's also going to talk about Judge Hannon's chart. Interesting. And he's going to talk about Taylor Swift's chart. You don't have to be a Swifty to know that she is going to have a huge bearing on our politics. She already has. When she tells her millions of viewers to go vote, they vote. So thank you, Adam, for joining us today. How are you? All right. Thanks for having me so much on your channel again. I am doing <laughs> fantastic, and this is going to be a wonderful show. It is. It's going to be awesome. It's always great to have you on my channel. It's been a minute, but we're remedying that right now. Yes. Listen, guys, you can find his information in the description below. His web, he has a YouTube channel and that is his name on, on his, uh, it's Adam Stargazing Astrology. So you can check out his YouTube channel, but uh, let's get started. Tell me about AI and robotics and how whatever planetary influences are coming in 2024 could impact that because I'm pretty sure that's going to impact all of us, right? All right. So there's going to be some really interesting aspects that are going to be going on this year that have really a lot to do with this a new AI and new technology energy. The first aspect is the planet Pluto. So Pluto represents the power structures. Pluto is what's considered in astrology a generational aspect, meaning that it moves a lot slower in the chart and it has a lot more long lasting influence. So Pluto, meaning power, is going and has just gone into the sign of Aquarius. So Aquarius is all about humanity and has its strong link with the planet Uranus. And it, that rules new technology, new wave, AI, everything in that realm rules Aquarius and Uranus. So that being said, um, you know, Pluto moving really slow. This is a slow evolutionary technological upgrade that we're really going to be seeing the next 20 years. So um, the Pluto will act as a foundation for a technological upgrade. And depending upon the transiting aspects is when we're going to see more or less technology come out. So there is an aspect that is going on right now with the planet Uranus. So Uranus moves slow around the chart too and is considered a generational aspect, but does not move as slow as Pluto. Uranus rules technology, it rules innovation, it rules new wave thinking, and it breaks the bounds of Saturn into a uh, new wave. And this is all have having to do with AI and new technology. That planet is in what's called a direct motion right now. And when, in, when it's direct, the, it's like a big energy push, an energy movement with that planet. So right now with Uranus in retrograde, um, there are discoveries and things going on behind the scenes with people, you know, scientists and people like that who, who are really all about AI um, that are currently developing it. So right now, uh, there's a lot of development, a lot of forward movement when that planet Uranus is in direct motion now. An aspect is going to be occurring in, in April where the planet Uranus is going to be sitting next to Jupiter. So anything sitting next to Jupiter, it blows it up and expands it. So this is just going to be a real technological boom that, that's going to be coming in April. But there's sort of a catch-22 that's going to happen because as soon as Jupiter hits Uranus, Uranus will soon go retrograde. So it's going to hide back again and there's going to be a lot of review as to as to making changes with things and as as to redefining and restructuring. Whenever we get retrograde planets, the word RE in the beginning, RE stands for redefine, review, relook, rethink, right? So that is really going to set the stage for um um you know you know this this motion of of all that technology sort of going to go inward again, right? Maybe refine itself. It's going to be sitting next to Jupiter. So there's going to be a lot more interest and a lot more expansion around it. And then, and, you know, in, in uh, you know, pre, uh, excuse me, approximately 46 months again, when it goes uh, direct motion, we're going to have a whole new surge going on. Four to six. So it could be something yeah. like we have a surge and then 
people say, oh, we need to do some regulations or maybe we need to uh, slow this down, that would be the retrograde. And then it's going to kind of yeah. surge forward again. Yeah. The, the interesting thing that's going on, though, is that Uranus is still in Taurus. So oh. Uranus is going to be in Taurus uh, approximately another two years. So Uranus is unstable. And, but it does stand for new way of thinking. It stands for out of the box thinking. However, Taurus wants stability. Uranus and Taurus were seeing insanity in like the crypto market, for example. Um, instability in, in uh, you know, earth changes, earthquakes, things like that. Um, you know, things having to do with those Taurus energies. Taurus is very earthy. Taurus is very structured. So this really is the ability to build AI structures I'm just not quite sure with this energy how stable and reliable they're going to be with Uranus and Taurus. Wow. So fits and starts, fits and starts, maybe. Uh, mm -hmm. Could this mm -hmm. also impact like food, like uh, food preparation, farming or livestock? Yeah. Yes. Taurus rules uh, the land, property, very much having to do with Mother Earth. And then the Uranus is all instability, instability with the weather. Um, you know, an instability with finances. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I've been seeing instability with the supply chain of food. Yeah. Not not that we're going to have, you know, no food, but just weird spotty things kind of not being available. And that sounds exactly like instability around Taurus mm -hmm. and then even around development with, of the AI and the robotics. Like, mm -hmm. hey, we all we tried this new robotic way of harvesting and it's great. And then boom, it's unstable. And so it could be, it sounds like AI could really be fritzing in and like, I see a, a light, you know, a, a, one of those neon lights, you know what I mean? Kind of, wow, that's amazing. Oh, where did it go? <laughs> you know what I mean? That mm -hmm. kind of energy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a very, yeah, it's, it's very unstable. It's very erratic. There is forward motion. And Uranus can also be great gains and great genius and great mental liberation. So mm -hmm. there's also a lot of genius ideas going on right now that could potentially set the stage for future evolution. Wow. Okay. So we might get flying cars after all, like this year. <laughs> yeah. I, I would say Uranus and Taurus would be more of the foundational idea for that. I wouldn't necessarily see it as the manifestation of it. Just Okay. Yet. The beginning. It all started. Yes. It all started. Uh -huh. then. Okay, that's fascinating. So, so do you does this um, say anything to you about robots? About you know, like literally robots being uh, that's that genius kind. We can make a leap of understanding uh, in using yeah. robotic energy. Um, so what 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 I actually see of the foundational robots is that so Taurus rules foundations. Uranus is unstable. Um, this could be the potential for a robot to manifest. Um, I would question or I, I would question the the technological stability of a robot and the uh, the real ability for it to be able to really make super positive change. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. In other words, <laughs> it scares me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's how I feel when about I it. Yeah, when I say I would question it, it's very questionable. Yes, no, I agree with you. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to see what the energy would be supporting around that topic. So that's <laughs> fascinating. So we could have some genius ideas, but mm -hmm. it's more of the foundation, the beginning of it. Yes. And also because of the Uranus and the retrograde, it may not take off immediately, it sounds like. Yes, Yes. And then the Pluto being the slowest moving planet, making the uh, longest, yeah. lowest lasting changes. I would see Pluto as like the foundation for that. So there say, you, you know, go. Uranus goes out of Taurus in a couple of years. Uranus will be in Gemini. Gemini is very quick with it. It's very ideas. You know, this could be, uh, you know, much, uh, you know, perhaps a, a quicker and speeding evolution of the Uranian energies okay. when it hits Gemini. So two years, it'll probably... Several years, yeah. It'll, it'll yeah. be okay. Yeah, and then and then Pluto will be full on in Aquarius. We're still dealing with this Pluto and Capricorn old hierarchical Trump stuff. We're still kind of we're we're still like cleansing ourselves from that. That's taking up a lot of our time right now. 
for sure. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Can't wait for that <laughs> to be done. And that that's yeah. that those things are kind of done like around November. Do we finally so, go into Aquarius? So Pluto currently is in Aquarius. It's going to oh, right. take one more retrograde motion, unfortunately, in September for approximately a month and a half, a little less. Okay. Um, right before the election, it's going to go back into Capricorn where we're going to see the nasty oh. of the nasty just boil over for its final time. Oh, okay. But the then death that's throws. It. The death throws. Yeah, yeah. So we're, we're basically, we're yet to see the death throws. So that's something to definitely be prepared for. For sure. And then it moves into Aquarius and you wrote, and you said, I translated it to power to the people, but you said, um, you know, Aquarius. Uh, so, so I just feel like when Aquarius goes into, when Pluto mm -hmm. goes into Aquarius, it's power to the people. That's kind of how I. Yeah, very much power to the people. So Aquarius, um, it rules politics. It rules, uh, it oh. leans towards new wave thinking. However, because Aquarius's old ruler is Saturn, there is still some traditional energy. And we really see that because a lot of Republicans as well have strong Aquarians in their chart. So just don't think because Pluto moved in Aquarius, we're all of a sudden going to be floating on air. Okay. <laughs> there is a def, there's a traditional side to Aquarius as okay, well. Okay, that's interesting. I didn't realize that. Ooh. That is interesting. Okay. It's ruled uh, by Saturn and yes. Wow. Okay. So we're not just going to go haywire nuts. Uh it's going to be the people but but it's still going to be I see. So that makes sense for, for what I had seen with this control of the people. The people want to get pitchforks and get in the streets, but I always saw control of the people. Uh, the government steps in and says, no, you're not going to be, you know, rioting. You can peacefully protest. There's, there's guardrails and even more yes. guardrails than there were. So that's the, that's the, the control that you're talking about with mm -hmm. Saturn. The people yes. can get power to the people, but you got to do it this way. You can't just mm -hmm. be acting cray cray. Okay, mm -hmm. so that makes sense. That's something new. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I love learning new things. Okay, cool. Very fascinating. So the next thing on your uh, topic, you did you want to go to uh, Cannon or uh, Judge Cannon? Yeah. So Judge Eileen Cannon is... Um, it's really interesting. So what I've been seeing with a lot of these Republican women throughout the board, we're talking Cannon, we're talking Sarah Palin, we're talking Nikki Haley. They have uh, what's called an afflicted Mars. So what I see with an afflicted Mars is I see that this individual is popular, but is popular uh, for kind of the wrong reasons. They tend to attract a lot of controversy around them they are more like flashes in the pan and their popularity comes um, with just a lot of strife. So Eileen Cannon is no different than Sarah Palin and Nikki Haley with these uh, Mars aspects. Um, also, another thing that I notice about these Mars aspects is that these individuals, they tend to fizzle out pretty quickly. So she's pretty much at the height of her popularity. Of course, she'll still be known in six months and a couple of years, but always people at the height of their popularity with these Mars at, with these Mars afflictions, the popularity doesn't last long and there's a lot of controversy. Um, so that being said, she's an Aquarius, right? And what's interesting is I mentioned Aquarius, right? Um, how Aquarius rules politics. Um, so she is an example of a very right wing Aquarius. Um, you know, she she is a judge. However, you know, she's very much uh, tied into the realm of politics. Her moon and what's interesting is her moon is in Capricorn. So Capricorn is very much, uh, you know, Capricorn, and the, you know, tarot is ruled by the devil. It's ruled by the patriarch. Right. The moon stands for her emotions. It stands for her feminine side. Um and it's interesting because as people, what do we do generally? Generally, we act on our emotions, right? That moon in Capricorn is, you know, is very much about for the status quo, very much about the patriarch, very much about the traditions, right? As represented uh, by someone like Donald Trump. Um, Capricorn also negate, can also negate the feminine principle, right? So what we have here is we have a, a female, right? Who is extremely ego-driven. Um, 
you know, which in some aspects is great because it brings her to higher heights. But in other aspects, you know, there's always a lot of controversy, as I mentioned. Um, so that being said, um, her Uranus, which rules instability, is in the seventh house. And the seventh house rules relationships in general. So we can pretty much be sure here that her her relationships are going to be erratic. They're going to be really in, unstable. And then on top of that, Uranus, she has a... Um, a square aspect or intense aspect to Mars. So um, a Mars square Uranus is very, um, can be extremely political, but also extremely controversial. And someone who's always getting in a quarrel or a fight or an argument, you know, something along those lines. So I would say she's not, you know, I, I would say like knowing this individual on a personal basis, I wouldn't say she's a very relaxed type of carefree individual um you know there's probably always a lot of drama that's been going on in her life um things that are unstable things that are changeable as well um what's interesting is you know she's backing donald trump right donald trump also has these really crazy crazy uranian aspects as well that stand for instability that stand for breaking the status quo that stands for rebelliousness so it's like she's she's really attracted to mar or excuse me to trump's uranian aspects um, you know, that are all that are quick and rebellious and fighting. But as we know, you know, in the long run, there's just there's not a lot of uh, uh, stability with this stuff, you know, and and, 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 and in the long run, you know, it, it ends up just not not really not really flying. Wow. Wow. So she's yeah. kind of at her zenith. And so you kind of see her, you know, on the downhill. Yes, yes, yes. So she has some other interesting aspects here. Um, she has what are called Jupiter square aspects. So Jupiter in astrology is known as the great benefic. But when it's in a square aspect, it's out of balance. And you tend to overestimate your capabilities, overestimate your ability to do stuff. So we see here that she's definitely overestimating. And the Jupiter is related to her moon, which is all about her emotions. And, um, you know, so so there's just there's a lot of overestimation of capabilities um, kind of like Trump, you know, she thinks she can kind of bend and twist things and kind of get away with it. And she kind of is to a certain extent. However, though, in on right on, you know, what I'm really seeing here is that, um, you know, she, she, she is at her zenith. Um, how, however, um, with these Mars aspects, she, you know, she, she's not going to be long lasting, um, and her reputation in the long run is going to be actually harmed by dealing with Donald Trump. Wow. That makes sense that, that, that um, her ego would get her in trouble. Mm -hmm. Another interesting aspect she has too as well. She has the planet Pluto, which represents power structures. She was born with a Pluto in retrograde. I see a lot of these individuals who are high on the political stage, um, have a Pluto in retrograde. So the whole idea around the retrograde aspect is that earlier on in life, or perhaps a past life, if you believe in that, um, the individual has overstepped their power, has abused their power. And now the, the, now they're here for a karmic balancing. So it's easy for them to overstep their power. It comes natural with a Pluto in retrograde. However, it's going against the grain of their own evolution. And we know when we go against the grain of our own evolution, we end up hurting ourselves. So that is also a key indication why I believe by her dealing with Donald Trump, she's going, she's going to be damaging her reputation. What I love, what I love about astrologers, and I guess this is true for anybody, is you guys look at it all very differently. Like I've never heard about this Pluto retrograde angle and how that in you know it, it is a power thing and the Mars affliction. I those are two things I didn't know about, and that's fascinating that you are bringing this kind of unique viewpoint to these people and sort of looping them together and saying, "Hey, these people have this same you know issue on their chart, same mm -hmm. placement, and uh, here they all are. You can see it. You can kind of see it in real life operating." <laughs> Totally think you're right. She's going to overstep her ego, uh, her bounds. And that, and, and Jack Smith is going to be there to say, no, this is the law. And, and he kind of represents Saturn to me like, no, this, this is not, this is not flexible. The law is not flexible. It's very black and white. And it's like, you're saying she is flexible. She's like, well, we'll just do that. Or we'll just do this or whatever. 
Uh, no, honey, mm -hmm. that's not how it works. Um, mm -hmm. That's when you get people that give get judgeships that shouldn't have been given a judgeship. You know, she doesn't have the maturity. Mm -hmm. She doesn't have the expertise. Wow, mm -hmm. that is fascinating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So as far as some of her aspects, so I looked at her short term aspects. Those are in play right now, you know, within the next perhaps month to approximately six weeks. Um, so she has a, the planet Mars, which represents her energy. It's in a hard aspect to Pluto. So this indicates very, uh, this is very combustible. This can be very accident prone as well. Uh, Pluto represents power. Mars represents the ego in a square aspect. This is just um, a lot of controversy, a lot of ego battles. You know, this is an aspect where someone could potentially like go out of their way and blatantly lie, you know, in, in, in order, you know, to, to, to try to push their ego ahead. Um, in any case, this aspect is completely unsettled. Um, and, and it's, it's very, it's, it's explosive and very accident prone on all levels. Um, another aspect is with her sun sign in a square aspect. So this is all ego stuff going on, you know, ego battles, ego, 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 you know, she, she's, she's wanting to win. Um, she's wanting to look good as well. So in the long-term aspect, she has these, uh, Jupiter square aspects, as I mentioned before, when that Jupiter is in a square aspect, it's the overestimation of one's capabilities. Um, so it's not really looking good for her it looks like there's the potential for her to get called out on some stuff um and so you know a lot of drama in the near future and then um and then the the and then her sort of swinging out and and you know kind of swinging messy again with that with those jupiter squares kind of swinging everywhere messy messy throwing herself out there you know kind of yeah, all over the place <laughs> it, sounds, uh, it sounds like christmas in july <laughs> i love this pretty much yeah, yeah. Swing yeah. away, baby. Swing away. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah. And I it's so it. funny because Jupiter pulls, you know, because Jupiter is is very much inclined toward toward optimism. So this is like, oh, I got this in my pocket. You know, like I got this. I got this, right? So and uh, you know, and with the uh, Jupiter square attitude, people can get uh kind of messy with things, right? Ooh. So so with that overestimation, there could be uh, perhaps a little bit of a mess, right? And with that mess, you know, that could be the potential of more downfall. So she's going to have to watch that. She's not going to watch that. I'm going to tell you right now, psychically, this woman is clueless. <laughs> she's, she's clueless. She has no idea well, what the hell is going on. Well, she's not looking at her chart. Oh, and the no. last aspect, the last long-term long aspect, actually, this one is really, uh, really interesting because she has, uh, she has the planet Uranus sending on her ascendant. So the ascendant has a lot to do with your public image and how you're coming across. Um, Uranus is very unstable. So Uranus can indicate uh, um, a lot of gains, a lot of losses, a lot of instability. So this could be a real potential downfall for her in combination with these Jupiter aspects. <laughs> it would be a pity. It would just be a pity, wouldn't it? It would be a pity. It would be a pity. <laughs> oh my God. If she only Poor. got a reading with Adam Free, she would know this and shut the hell up. But she didn't, right. and we're not going to tell her. Okay. Um, calm down. <laughs> what'd you say? Oh, oh, and, and then well, and she would calm down a little. But then on top of it, right, she has this moon in Capricorn, and the moon in Capricorn is so can be so self deprecating. Um, so, so I really see the potential for her to sort of swing out, get in trouble, go through a lot of losses, and then just beat herself up on the inside with that Capricorn moon. <laughs> just know. judge, you know, just just be the total like out and out judge of her own her own. So, so it just further causes her to sort of fall apart. Basically, she doesn't have the. That's real, that's real potential with that Capricorn moon because you know the moon stands for the emotions, right? Whenever you whenever you look at the uh you know you want to see there's the ego right and then there's the id right the id's like the emotions it's kind of like what's going on behind the scenes and for her that's capricorn and capricorn is uh extremely judgmental right because it's so much of a perfectionist um so if there's a downfall she's gonna that energy's gonna get turned inward being her moon sign and she's just gonna really judge herself so note to you guys if you have a capricorn moon you know, we have a sun sign, we have a rising sign, we have a moon sign. You can find this stuff out pretty easily. If you have a Capricorn moon, don't be judgmental. Don't allow that to fester and, and you know, cause you more problems 
than need be, right? Um, that's a good advice. Very good advice, actually. Because they always say Capricorn Moon is a hard placement, but I never understood why. Like no one could really explain it to me in a way that made sense like you just did. So that makes perfect sense to me. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, that, yeah, that's a one of the definitely more harder placements for sure. Very okay, cool. So Are you ready mm -hmm. to move on to Taylor Swift and our new best, uh, you know, Swifty, uh, the Swifty Nation. Let's do it. Okay. So, um, so for all of the, you know, for, for everyone listening, um, I believe it's on Netflix. You know, I, I watched a, a documentary slash autobiography on Taylor Swift. It was quite interesting. And it made me look at her in a whole new light. And the reason why is because if you don't know a lot about something, it's really easy to judge it. And for humanity we kind of do that so before i watched this i was really judgmental i'm like well she's a this and a that and she got things given to her and hannah blah 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 she's pretty blah whatever you know but however though you know i i so, so what i did was i watched her documentary it made me look at her in a whole new light and i studied her astrology chart she is a hard worker she has a strong second house a second house is all about um accumulation of resources by your own efforts she has a ton of Capricorn in there. Capricorn is ruled by Saturn and it's perfectionism, right? She has spent hundreds of hours at her craft. And I found out that she actually has pretty much written all of her own songs. And she's wow. literally made like hundreds and hundreds of songs. Um, there are videos of her when she's really young playing guitar and singing. So this is really something that she's actually built up upon over the years. Whereas me, you know, not knowing a lot about her, I thought like, ah, people probably write songs for her and she's pretty, so she's a nice face. <laughs> you know, that's about it. Um, I was totally wrong. Um, so that being said, she also acts as um, a real conduit for this new Aquarian age. Her North Node, which stands for her evolutionary uh, uh, direction of progression, is in Aquarius. So Aquarius falls under the realm of politics. Um, we know she's gotten more political as well. Um, so, uh, And it also falls under the realm generally of uh, more new wave thinking and more community thinking um so she very much represents that her south node opposite her north node is her foundational springboard and that's leo leo is center stage um so it's very natural for, for her to be on the center stage but she's moving more towards that group and collective and group consciousness and uh politics as represented by that aquarius north node so what she's really doing here is she's, um, in a lot of ways, she's really showing the more positive aspects of uh, of um, certain astrological signs being Leo and Aquarius, her North and her South node. What is so interesting is she had this, um, you know, Capricorn, and she has a ton of Capricorn in her chart. She rose to the heights of fame as represented by Capricorn, because Capricorn also rules fame and fortune. But she said she never felt so isolated and so alone. And what's so interesting is the the apex of Capricorn, you know, is the mountain goat climbing that mountain by itself. But the 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 whole, you know, the saying that it's lonely at the top, right, was a total, total kind of a um, thing that she underwent right and when she underwent that she had a lot of epiphanies right she felt like she could either you know kind of uh um sort of revert back into her comfort zone or she could move further more into using her fame and fortune as represented by capricorn into that north node in aquarius and sharing it with humanity and being a positive influence wow so i really like her for that another thing too is that she was involved in a sexual assault case where she was actually sexually assaulted on set um so she she uh you know had to um you know go to court and she had to defend herself she did end up winning but it took a while and it was just very nerve-wracking 
So she has a lot of compassion and she dedicates a lot, a lot of her songs and a lot of her time to those individuals who have been victims of sexual assault and have not been heard or have lost their cases. You know, and unfortunately, that is still, you know, a fair amount of people out there. So she's just been a, a, you know, a real channel for a really positive change. I mean, she really, in a lot of ways, is kind of like a love bug, you know, and Swifties, you know, and she, she, I see her, um, you know, her concerts and the way she can light up thousands of people, you know, and bring them all together for happiness and joy, right? I mean, that's a high vibration, right? She must be doing something right. Exactly you know she's she really has gone through some really pivotal points you know her mom was sick with cancer for a while which made her sort of um you know kind kind of question where her um you know or where her values were and then her moon as well her moon is in cancer so the moon in cancer tends to be more nurturing more motherly right so she has this very sweet side and i know she just got married and Someone with a cancer moon is definitely, that's a moon sign that is more likely to have children. Wait, wait, wait. She got married. Oh, wait, oh, wait I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. She's, she's with, she's with. Yeah, yeah. she didn't get yeah. married. She's yeah. with uh, oh. Travis Kelsey, right? Oh God, yeah. you almost blew my mind there for a oh. minute. Okay. Sorry, sorry. But, uh, you know, she, 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 she's with him with a, uh, you know, like a, a potential marriage. Um, and the cancer moon is definitely a moon sign that likes to nurture, you know, definitely more linked to family and children and stuff like that. So what I sort of saw with her is I saw in, um, I saw this sort of psychic protection that she has from her innocence and her purity. Um, and, and um, that is really something that has exposed her to a lot of stuff, but at the same time has kept her really safe if that makes sense. Um, so that being said, I don't feel like she's in any harm. I feel like she's going to continue to be loved by a lot of people. Um, a good potential for her to have a family as well. And then also to remain um, as a voice in politics with that North Node in Aquarius and for that to keep growing. Now, I know she's young, right? She's still, what? what is she in her early 30s? I think so. I don't. So, know. I mean, that's really young, you know. So she's still she's done so much, and yeah, she's had true. so much ambition with all this Capricorn energy. Um, you know, well, it's exciting to see what's going to happen in the future with her. But I definitely see, um, you know, just a lot of good, a, a lot of good energy continuing to go her way. Wow! And she's going to be a juggernaut. She's going to be sort of a a big help for our society, right? For, mm -hmm. uh, it, I, I did see that she tell, she told everybody to go vote. She didn't say go vote for Joe Biden, go vote for Democrats. She said, go vote, you know? Yes. So she is being responsible in the sense that she's not, uh, and at least at this moment, she's not come out, um, to, uh, actually, you know, endorse anybody. Yeah. Yeah. She's still kind of at that point where I feel like she may need to sort of stay in a safety zone. We'll see once she gets older. And I know she's really not about breaking. You know, she wants to sort of stay in this very neutral. But, you know, we'll we'll see once she gets older, you know, people's personalities change. Um, you know, that I feel like that could be a potential area of development that she's slowly going towards. Right. And, and what we're really going to do is just throughout the years, you know, she, first of all, she's not going to be leaving anytime soon. She's not going to be leaving the spotlight anytime soon. And the North Node is very foretelling of one's, you know, karmic evolution and destiny. And that being an Aquarius, you know, this is, I feel like this is sort of the beginning of a long, somewhat, you know, political say she's going to have and political sway she's going to have. It's going to be up to her, you know, how much she wants to dive in. So that's uh -huh. fascinating. You guys can see now that the North, if you could see how he read Ta Taylor Swift, right? And how he read Judge Cannon. Wouldn't you want to know if you had a placement that perhaps you didn't realize it, but you, you know, like with Judge Cannon, like your your ego is outsized right now. And just because of the placements of the planets, um, you may not really be able to trust your, you know, your own, ideas right now as much as normal because they're sort of blown out of proportion so the i'm telling you guys these astrology readings are super helpful and the mm -hmm. other thing 
that I don't, that I don't really, we haven't talked about with my astrologers on this channel is astro cartography, which is <laughs> that is awesome. of yeah. travel. And just one really quick, one really yes, cool please, thing. Correct me. To talk about transit charts is that I can set the date for something that happened in the past. A lot of times people come and they're like, something happened 12 years ago, it rocked my life. And I'm not, a, I haven't been able to move on, right? I need clarity so I can move on. So I'll read that chart. I'll create a bunch of clarity, right? Which is the beginning of a gateway for the individual to be able to move oh on God. into the present. I can also do charts for the future as well. You know, I love that you can go back. I love that. Yep. Like, okay, yes. that line cheating SOB. I want to know what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So that. And mm -hmm. when were those planets? Because then you can say, hey, uh, those planets are going to be back in your energy again in, you know, next year. So be careful of lying, cheating SOBs. I'm just saying uh, as an example, right? Um, uh -huh. That's great. I did not know you could do that. Now yes. I have more reasons to get more astrology charts done. Great. I always love that. Um, and then the other thing is relocation. If you're thinking about moving and, and let's be honest, okay, truly Trump is going to lose, but I know all of y'all are thinking about where to move outside of this country. I know you are. So <laughs> whether you're thinking about where can I go, <laughs> whether that's the case or whether you're thinking, I think I want to move. I don't know where to move. This is where you really might consider an astro cartography, which is like an astro map, um, Adam can do that for you. And he can say, like he was saying to me before, and I don't know why he brought up Venus, but he did. Uh, he said, you know, like, let's say you're moving and you want to have a love life. You know, you want, you've been single, you're ready. You're ready to have that be a part of your life now. Well, then you want to look at the Venus line, right? So, so wherever you move, could have that kind of impact on you. And, and I would assume that there are places you can move that would have kind of not so great impacts mm -hmm. on you mm -hmm. as well. So you mm -hmm. want to avoid some places, but if you're kind of considering some things, you might want to think about how it's going to affect your astrology because that's very, very, very involved. Your life is astrology. You are astrology. You know, you're living astrology. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's pretty fascinating too. So Adam can do all of those things. His email is in the um, description below. His YouTube channel is right there, Adam Stargazing Astrology. So please subscribe to his YouTube channel. Um, and did you want to talk, do you want to add anything to uh, to what I said? What I probably butchered it, but it that's my description of it. Um, no, that was actually great. And the last thing I offer to our composite charts, which are which are relationship charts. Oh, yeah. And those are great for uh, any business relationship, any marriage, any friendship. Um, so that's Can you do thing. children? Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Children's charts as well. Mm -hmm. So if you want to know what's going on there, you can you'll need their birth date and time. And uh -huh. then he'll he'll, you know, give you a side by side comparison and help you understand what is going on there, right? Which again, yeah. he said a few minutes ago, and I think the key word here is clarity. Aren't we all looking for clarity? My God. So they, these are tools, you guys. These are tools mm -hmm. at your disposal. Use them, you know? Uh, we're not meant to go through this life, you know, with no no light shining on our path. That's why we have psychics and numerologists and astrologers and, and Reiki healers. We, we have tools, avail mm -hmm. yourself of them, you know, use them. Um, mm -hmm. Did you want to cap off our little talk today about the new moon? Let's do it. Yeah. All righty. So the new moon is going to be occurring March 10th, which is going to be happening right around the corner. So the new moon is going to be occurring in the astrological sign of Pisces. So this is some real watery energy going on when the sun and the moon is in Pisces. So the new moon is always a time to look inward. It's a time to plant psychological seeds or perhaps even seeds in the ground. And the reason why I'm saying that is because we're hitting spring now. Um, so this is a good time, you know, for either of those. Um, so the, yeah, so the energy always comes to a standstill during the new moon. Um, definitely a more introverted sign here, Pisces being a water sign. Some strong Pisces uh, qu 
qualities are creativity, artistry, spirituality, meditation. Um, so I would say Pisces would be linked to the ocean or a monastery. Um, you know, and, and you know anything where there's deep contemplation, or or you see something, uh, you know, some beautiful creative work of art that could be real Piscean energy as well. Pisces is also really strongly linked with uh, things like sacrifice and compassion and universal love as well. So Pisces can be some of the most loving people, but at the same time, Pisces can also rule delusion and escapism and drugs as well. Um, so that can be the negative side of that. So that being said, the sun sign, the moon sign, the planet Saturn and Neptune are going to be in Pisces. So Saturn in Pisces is a great time to create some sort of spiritual practice, spiritual foundation. The reason for that is Saturn represents foundation. Pisces energies go much towards the art, the arts, the creativity, meditation. Um, and then Neptune has been in Pisces now for a while. Neptune in Pisces sort of dissolves and bur uh, blurs the boundaries. Um, it's a very ethereal, great time for anything creative. So this, you know, this this new moon definitely draws us much more inward, much more to the center of ourselves. Great time for sleeping, relaxing, letting go, going downstream and daydreaming as represented by that watery Piscean energy. So there is going to be some opportunity for some positive change going on. The reason why is because the sun and the moon sign sitting right next to each other are going to be forming a sextile aspect which is also called an aspect of opportunity to the planet Uranus. Uranus is all about change. It's all about breaking past those structures that have perhaps limited you and held you back. So there's the opportunity for positive change with that as well. So that's something to be looked forward to. Um, Stacey, you know, uh, liken that to perhaps a new paradigm shift. So it can be anywhere, you know, from... Um, you know, a, a change of uh, exercise routine, right? That maybe uh, stimulates you more or perhaps, you know, the change of, um, you know, and ju just anything, right? Um, you know, making a, uh, um, you know, a, a, a beautiful piece of art that inspires you to do something, you know, anything that invokes positive change and breaking out of your old comfort zone. So the North Node is still in Aries. The North Node is in uh, each sign approximately a year and a half. So we still have a while to go. That North Node is this is the uh, the um, evolution of progression. The North Node in Aries really asks us to be a daredevil. Um, it asks us to um, to stand our own ground and asks us to really be our own trailblazer. Sitting across that is our foundational springboard, the South Node. The South Node is represented by um, right now by Libra. So when our south node is in order, we can move forward on our north node path. It's very important right now that our relationships are smoothed out as those are the foundations now as represented by the south node. So if there's anything going on, quarreling with any sort of relationships, having, you know, relationships across the board, um, those will be holding you back from really stepping into your own independence and your own fearlessness as, as uh, you know, as required now by that North Node in Aries. So there's a couple planets in Aquarius. Aquarius is super political. We have Mars in Aquarius. When I think of Mars in Aquarius, I think of, uh, you know, someone that, um, uh, you know, like a, like a canvasser, you know, or, or someone who's out there, you know, um, you know, waving some sort of political flag. We need to be worried with Mars in Aquarius because Aquarius is so political and Mars can tend towards aggression. Um, you know, so this is something to watch out for now. Venus is an Aquarius as well, too. Um, you know, Venus is all about compatibility and harmony in relationships right now. So there's also the potential, too, for, um, you know, for a, a, a lot of energies to, to come together as a sort of one mind and a consensus as represented by Venus. So we're really kind of seeing both of that now. It's like this double-edged sword going on. Um, so the North Node right now, as mentioned before in uh, Aries, it's going to be, it's sitting now next to Chiron. Chiron uh, represents our wounds. So what's really being represented on a collective scale right now is this deep wound, this deep humanitarian wound going on. Um, it's very much highlighted right now. So, you know, this, this could be a, you know, a, 
it's 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 a you know this right now it's it's a time you know of a lot of chaos of a lot of crisis of a lot of things coming up and purging you know just wounds wound after wound after wound um so a good remedy for something like this is to turn inward right and to try to just take care of yourself try to soothe those wounds um Chiron in the North Node, this aspect is very collective. So this is happening across the board. Um, you know, so this is this is something that is hi highlighting where we become separate, where we become chaotic. Um, you know, and unfortunately, a lot of times, you know, things like this, um, you know, there there's there's you know um, you know can can just create more more divisiveness. It's like the the divisiveness can be that much more painful. Um, you know, at, at, during times like this and, you know, can be, you know, that much more kind of in our face. Um, so what we can do, you know, for that on our own personal level, right, is just try to try to stay in, in integrity with ourselves, right? You know, try to stay healthy, you know, mind, body and spirit and to, um, you know, really hope for the best. Stay hopeful. Yeah, yeah, hopeful. Yeah, yeah. So those are some of the the major aspects going on for this new moon. When does this Chiron a uh, wound uh, fest uh, get over? <laughs> I, I'm just of, done with this. Like we need to get past this. The the North Node Chiron. Uh, this is um, approximately like a month. Oh, that's not bad for real. I only got yeah. to do this a month. Yeah, it, I mean, it it moves. You know, it, the 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 degree of separation will start to fade in like a month. Oof. Yeah. Is that, gonna, is that really going to, are we going to feel that? I mean, or is that something we're probably not going to feel? Um. Well, the North Node in, is an Aries and Aries is so rash and impulsive and is so much about like forward movement and action. That indicates that it's something that we're, we're it's like, we're just like going, we're just going to keep going. It's not, there's not going to be a lot of self-reflection with that Aries energy. It's like, okay. all right, it's done. Let's go. We're on to the next. Boom. Okay. Okay. So we're going to move through it. We're going to move through it. Yeah, and we're going to yeah, rashly just keep going headstrong. Head yeah. Through. Aries burns through things. You burn through it with Aries. I'm fine with that. Let's just burn <laughs> through it. I pull the bandaid <laughs> off for the love of God. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. Well, that is fascinating. Thank you so much, Adam. Wow. Yeah. I have learned so much today that I'm going to have to watch this video myself. <laughs> to learn to, to, to like get it because I didn't know these things. I, I honestly didn't know Aquarius was, uh, was politics. Like I, oh, yeah. that is something did not know. So that was fascinating. Um, I learned a lot. Thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Yes, you're welcome. We'll have to do it again. Yeah. Um, because I want to pick apart some of these other people's charts now. I'm like, you're talking oh, about yeah. Island Cannon and the Mars affliction. Um, it sounds like something you need penicillin for, really. I mean, it's like, my Mars <laughs> is afflicted. You know, like, you should probably get a shot. Maybe, maybe <laughs> I don't know. Um, I but I wonder, like <laughs> I mean, I just think about Bobert and, and MTG. They are afflicted with something. So I want to think oh, yeah. about that. I want to yeah. know what they're afflicted with because <laughs> yeah, they've yeah. afflicted us now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, <laughs> We've mm -hmm. been bitten by them. We have the rabies now. Oh my mm -hmm. God. Um, thank you so much, Adam. So, Hey, you guys, thank look, you. you saw how this can help you. If you've thought it was fascinating listening to him talk about uh, judge Eileen Cannon and these other people, you can understand how this would be helpful in your own life. If you are interested, he's going to book up. I promise you everybody that's on my channel books up. So, if you're interested, don't put it off. Just go ahead and contact him and uh, start the process to learn uh, more about that. Uh, he's great about answering emails, so you will be in good hands. And uh, we'll see him again real soon, hopefully on his channel. And everybody check out his YouTube channel and take really good care, everybody. And uh, we'll see you again real soon, okay? Thanks, Thanks again, Adam. For entertainment purposes only.